Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is the handover on the 2020 Malibu i490. So to open the various lockers around the motorhome, you've got the fade key which obviously drives the ignition but because it's got, because it's an A-class, they don't actually use fade doors, they use their own doors so all the doors are opened with the Cathargo key, so this door, the passenger door and all the locks. So you've got storage in here, which is underneath your bench seat behind the driver's seat. You've got a storage compartment there, which is good for your hookup blade and your wet items because it's plastic lined. You've got your external bar barbecue point, gas point, so you've got your bullfinch uh, red connector in there. You need a Jubilee clip and some orange gas hose to connect it to your Kadak or your gas appliance and it'll run off the bottles on board. You've got your Truma vent for your heating and hot water system, two fridge vents, your toilet, this is your toilet locker door. So make sure the blade's closed first of all, otherwise the cassette won't come out. Pull the orange handle, lift it out, you've got some wheels there so you can drag it around the site. Take it to the waste disposal site which is normally behind or beside the toilet block. Take the grey cap off, which is a measuring stick when you come to top it back up. Press the orange button and tip out. Once you've tipped it out, put some water in, give it a rinse, tip out again. Then, it, like I said, cap full of the liquid into here. But if you're using the tablet form, you can just open and push a tablet into there. But you do need a pint of water in before you put the tablet in if you're using the tablets. And then that just clips back into there and you've got space here for your liquid or some spare toilet rolls. Come to the back of the vehicle, so you've got your max view. This is just an external um, aerial point. So you can get a coax lead and it'll just clip in there. And should you be on a super site where you struggle to get a TV signal, but you shouldn't because you've got a satellite signal, a uh, satellite system, sorry. You can just connect to there and use their aerial. Your mains connectivity point here, so this is where you connect the vehicle up with the hookup lead. So lift, connect the vehicle up first, and then connect the side, and then obviously do it the other way around when unhooking the vehicle. And then you do have your large garage at the back here. So this customer has for the table to be removed to so the tables here. You've got your own unwinding handle which just stores away there. Got a tool kit, your carpets and a hookup lead. And obviously it is heated, the garage. You've got a, a mains 240 socket and you've got a shower point here. So should you want to hose the dogs off or the bikes or the boots, obviously if you want the hot water, you've got to make sure the boiler's been on, but make sure the pump's on and you'll be able to use it to blast the dirt off. At the back of the van, you've got your parking sensors along the bottom, high level brake light, and rear view camera, and then coming on this side, so you've got the same in the garage carpets, hookup lead, tool kit, brace, and a good size storage for bikes and other bits and pieces if you're going on the continent. We've got a 12 volt point there for a 12 volt pump, but mainly to fill with water, which is here. So this is a lockable. You'd get a hose pipe and get yourself some connectors because just a brass cap on most sites. Put the hose pipe into there, wait until it either overflows out the vehicle or until there's enough water on board, which you can see on the main control panel above the habitation door. You've got your gas LPG and this previous customer has had gas all fitted so this is a refillable bottle system so to refill you would just take this cap off go to your local lpg center you can get these at most service stations or petrol stations it's a bayonet fitting so you get the filler turn the front of the filler pull the trigger back and then press the button on the fuel display until it stops filling and the, this will probably take about 20 25 pound being two bottles so once you enter the motorhome, to lock the habitation door on its own, you just press this chrome catch back. 
and then pull it forward to release. And above the door you have the various control panels. So you've got your solar panel, your heating and hot water, which I'll get onto in a second, your main 12 volt control panel, and your Truma Duo C, which heats and cools the regulator to stop the gas from freezing. So you can turn it on and it'll tell you as well that it's green, which means the gas is full. Above the door, you've got your main control panel. So if you want to know if you're hooked up or not, this sign here indicates that you have mains 240 volt on board. So you can use any three pin plug around the motorhome. You've got your master switch here, which will either give you 12 volt if you're not hooked up or 240 if you are. Above you've got your pump, so make sure you've got enough water in the tank before you put your pump on. But you must have your pump on to use the taps, toilet and shower. You've got the music symbol there. This just means that you can have the head unit on in the cab off the leisure battery instead of having the uh, ignition turned on. And then you've got your main master lights which are all then individually switched around the vehicle. And then coming down this side you've got your level. So at the top you've got your leisure battery level which is 13.5 so it's 100%. You've got your fresh water level which is half a tank. You've got your waste which is empty and at the bottom you've got your Fiat engine battery which is 13 volts. Next to it we've got your Truma, Truma digital control panel so to turn on and off you just press and hold the wheel button here and then enter you just press enter and then you've got the motorhome with a thermometer in the far left hand corner this is the temperature of the vehicle so you can have it all the way to 30 degrees you can turn it all the way down to off once you're happy, you'll just press enter to save that at 30 degrees if you're in the water. Or should I say the vehicle, sorry. Next one's your water. So this is where you heat your water. So if you haven't got any water on board, you'd have it on off. You've got it on eco, which is 40 degrees of heating your water, which is used for showering. And then you've got it on hot, which is 60 degrees. Or you can have it on boost, which will turn the heating off prioritize the water get the water to temperature and then put the heating back on so for this we'll just say hot moving further along you've got your energy source so you've got gas on its own if you're a wild camping and you didn't have a electric source you have mix which is one kilowatt of electric and gas mixture two which is two kilowatts of electric and gas so this is the best source if the vehicle's cold or you want water quicker in the winter time use both sources together which will reduce the heating time and then obviously we just turn it back to electric so don't waste your gas and then you do have electric on one kilowatt so should you be abroad or on a smaller CL site you may have to use a less um, amperage so you may have to use electric one but on most camping and caravan sites around the UK you can use electric on two Moving further along you've got your fan, so you can have this on eco or high, this is just a 12 volt assisted fan, so eco if you're well camping high if you weren't bothered, as it <coughs> does take a feed off your leisure battery, so like I said if you're well camping you want to save that battery a little bit so you will use eco, and you can use high when you're hooked up. A timer, the clock on the display panel, so when the, times, when the clocks go back and forth you can change it on here, it'll show you the time. And then you've got a spanner there, so if you get a warning triangle in the middle, you go to reset, press the wheel, it'll say preset, press again, and then you can reset your heating and hot water system, and you'd have to reset it all again. And this one is your your remote digital dual uh, solar panel charger, so as you can see, battery one and two. One will be more than likely leisure, and two will be engine battery and as you can see you've got 13.3 amps in your leisure in your batteries there so now in the kitchen so you've got your sink cover there which just slots into here and acts as a bit of a chopping board or a a stand for your stand your plates on you've got your three gas rings so just push down and light See there, they're all lit. Allow them to cool before you do put the glass lids down as you can shatter the glass with the heat. Got storage in these drawers here.
a little waste bin there. For wine bottles, so you can store them in here. So not put your gas taps. So should you have any problems with gas, turn the bottle off to be safe. These are mainly for when the vehicle is habitation serviced. And then this is just your tyre inflation kit. Opposite the kitchen area you do have your Dometic styled grill and oven. So there's a there's the oven lit there at the back. And then if above you've got your grill. You may want to take these out when travelling or wrap them up. But these Malibu A classes are quite quiet on the road compared to others. And then for your fridge, so you've got on and off here. You've got 240 electric gas or battery, which is off the engine when the engine's running. The alternator sends a feed to the fridge to keep the fridge at the temperature it was when departing. But what A stands for, it stands for automatic energy selection. So it'll it's basically there's a brain of the fridge and it'll pick out the best source that you have on offer. So should we be hooked up now and the gas was to be switched on, which it is, if I was to take the hook up out, it would switch over to gas. If I was then to start the engine, it would switch over to the battery. But with the battery setting is, if you're lucky enough to keep this at home, you'd probably hook this up a day or two before you go away. The night before, you'd probably fill your freezer and your fridge, allow that to cool overnight, and then when you are ready to, to travel, if it's on automatic, you just turn the engine over and it'll automatically go on the battery. If not, you can come and manually press the, the battery button and it will keep the temperature of the fridge the same, so it acts a bit like a cool box, keeps your shopping fresh until you then go on to gas, or if you go to a site, you hook up. You've got your temperature here, and you've got your reset button. And then once you're all finished with the fridge, for the season, so you're bedding the van down for just a month or you're bedding it down for the winter, you want to take everything out of your fridge and freezer, you want to give it a good wipe out with some, um, like an anti-back spray, Dettol or other substance, and then what you want to do is push and slide these lugs out, and what that does is it stops the freezer door seal from sealing on the frame, and basically a limit allows air in and out the fridge as you can get your fingers down the seal at the bottom there. So the last previous customer fitted a Truma Aventa Comfort air conditioning to the vehicle. So if you look in the cupboard here, you'll see 230 volt AC. That is just the power to this. You've got to be hooked up for this to work. This won't work off 12 volt as it takes such a high current. Get your remote, press your button, point it to here. The aisle start flashing. Give it a couple of seconds and you'll hear it kick in. So there you go, it's starting to kick in. So you've got your temperature, you put your mode so you can have it as cooling, you can have it on auto or you can have it as recirculating there within the vehicle. Like so. You've got your fan speed, so one, two or three along the top. And then down here, you put your lights so you can have and turn the lights on oh there is no lights on this one sorry I do apologize you can set your timers and obviously this is iNet ready so you can connect this to the iNet app by putting a sim in this as well you can control the heating and the air conditioning all off your phone via the Truma iNet app. So opening the blade eliminates it from getting stuck and messed up. So flush, open the blade, use the toilet, flush the toilet again and then you want to close the blade which is just down here and then that allows it to come out the outside of the vehicle to be emptied or to be topped up with chemical. 
You've got a neat toilet roll, roll holder here, so in behind, it sits in there, and you can put it through the door. And then you've got a nice storage rack there as well for your toilet rays. Now in the back of the vehicle in the bedroom area, so you do have two single beds or you can make it into a double by just pulling the extension out here and then neatly stored away under here is a cushion and then that, that cushion just slides in here and makes a double across the width of the vehicle but most people use them as singles because they're quite wide singles on this model and then this just stores away here to open all your cupboards there's a little chrome catch behind so don't just pull the handle push the chrome catch in which is releases the travel lock and allows you in to your cupboard area there so this is just storage all through the back Got a three pin plug and a reading light there so that they are both individually switched so you can have this one on or that one depending on who wants a light on on an evening and your skylight you would just push the button in pull the bar up or slide it into the grooves for a bit of ventilation during the summer months but always make sure that the bar is right pushed up and the buttons popped out below that indicates it's locked as these are just plastic windows on the, on the roof and a gust of wind would just rip them off and they're quite expensive to replace so do make sure that all windows and skylights are shut securely before you do start travelling you've got a blackout blind and you've got a fly screen so above your TV in the front which folds up and down right, you've got your Satisfy satellite system so you turn it on at the top here, you'll hear the satellite go round on the roof until it locks on. And then on the telly itself, you've got source, you can go between digital and satellite TV. Obviously this works. As you can see it's picked up a, four, a TV reception on satellite. And you've got your controls for the back, so you've got your, so it must be a twin LMB on this one. But you can turn it so you can have watch the telly at the back independent or you can watch the telly at the front. But I would just leave them as they are and I'll show you the back one. Yeah, so as you can see, this is a different channel to the front telly. So this is a twin LMB. So forget about those boxes. You can watch two independent channels within the motorhome. Underneath the main floor hatch in the front of the van, next to the habitation door, you've got a large storage space here in the double floor. And if you just look, this tells you here, so there's three taps. So there's your waist, so you don't open your waist from in here, which your waist pipe is behind the back wheel, the back of the vehicle. So should the waist be full, which will indicate on the control panel, you can drive over your desired place on site and then just dump your waste you've got your this one here this eliminates the hot water so any water that's in the hot water system in the vehicle in the hot water pipes which obviously becomes cold water you just lift that and that'll just drain the pipelines out and then this here is what's called a frost control jute so what it'll do is at three degrees it'll automatically drop so the diamond will go from across the vehicle to front to back. This button will pop out. That that shows that it's open. Like that. And it'll drain directly underneath the chassis. 10 litres of water is what the boiler holds. And this will drain 10 litres of water off out underneath the chassis. Allow this to be open during the time you've got the vehicle standing in the winter months. And then when you are ready to reuse it, obviously you would close all the taps, all of these, close all the taps within the vehicle, the mixer taps, fill the vehicle with water, put the pump on, go to the cold side of the tap first, you get automatically cold water, go to the hot side, 
it'll cough, sputter, and make all sorts of noises until it the system is primed. So now in the cab, to the right of me, you have your handbrake and a handy storage unit. You've got your rear view camera, which is on all the time and when in park and reverse. You've got your tyre pal, so this the last customer's fitted a tyre monitoring system, so it'll just tell you your tyre pressure's there. There's the sensors on the wheels. You've got your step switch, so should it be beeping, when you put the engine on, it doesn't automatically bring this step in. You can just press this button here from the, the driving seat and pull the step in. You've got your heated mirrors and you've got your mirror adjustment for your coach style mirrors. You've got your headlight adjustment, you've got front and back fogs. And you, if you don't, didn't want your start stop to work, you can turn that off. But your start stop will only work under certain factors. Being that the battery has got a good voltage in it, you haven't got any of your climate control on otherwise if it was down low a battery in the start stop was to work you might not be able to get the engine going again but should you put your foot on the brake and it's got sufficient charge in it and the but the, the engine cuts out for a bit your start stops working you've got your trip computer on the end of your wiper stalk which goes through your screen here in the middle so it'll tell you your range, your average and instant consumption, your travelling times, your distance travelled, your mileage done, your time and so on. Lighting indicators, cruise control, off speed limiter, so speed limiter will come up on the top limiter off and you will just turn, turn it up in the top corner. When you go to cruise control the green light will come on at the bottom of this rev count and then you can get to the desired speed, push it up and then should you have to go for the brake you can press the button on the side which will resume it or cancel it should you need to. Steering wheel controls, we've got mute volume, hands free and scroll through your radio tracks. This has got the new 9 speed automatic gearbox, you've got park, reverse, which then you've got your rear view sensors but on this one you've also got front sensors so this here will light up with bars very similar to a Mercedes car um, so it will tell you how close you are at the front as well it's got sensors on the front of the A class you've got drive and then if you push it to the left you can go up and down the gears manually drive mode is just eco normal or power to be fair I wouldn't bother with eco because you don't save much fuel using eco I'd leave it on normal and this gearbox has got a kick down so should you need to um, accelerate quickly if you put your foot flat to the floor it'll drop a gear or two and it'll get you moving quicker should you need to lockable glove box this is traction control turns it off you've got hill descent control with it being an auto hazards and this locks your door so it locks that door and it locks the habitation door on a night. These sensors are for your alarm system, so these are your ultrasonic sensors. So should you want to arm it with yourselves in, um, you may just want to turn these sensors away so it doesn't just pick you up or cover them. But there, there will be a way of turning them off in the instructions. You've got your temperature, where you want the air to go to, so your face, so should I say the seal on your face, your feet, fan speed, recirculate, max the windscreen and you can turn it off and you've got the aircon. And then in the middle here you do have your Pioneer head unit. So you can go to the menu. You've got DAB, FM, USBs, which are in the top glove box there for connecting. Bluetooth, so it connect your phone to Bluetooth. Obviously, you just go to here. And you'd go to connections, and you'd search for a phone. And then it'll ask if you want to sync your contacts. Once you've pressed sync your contacts, whoever rings you comes up on here. And then, of course, you do have. GPS as well, so motorhome Pacific GPS, 
Wait, go down here and you can put a new route in. So you can put address. With this, I wouldn't put your household address if you're keeping it at home. Put a street before or your state or wherever you can navigate to and then you can navigate your way home. But don't put your address in just because if they steal your motor home, they know where you live. Glove box, you've got your bonnet release here. Your engine battery lives underneath the floor and just underneath the passenger seat is where you'll find all the 12 volt fuses for the various equipment so it would be a good idea to carry some spares these is for the motorhome not for the cab the cab ones live under here and there's some underneath the bonnet and to turn your captain seats round you've got this lever here which will turn the seat in the back of the motorhome and the driver's seat will do exactly the same.